Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to stop rushing your golf swing, how to have good tempo and rhythm out there. I'm gonna give you my eight best strategies on how to do that right now. Hey guys, just wanna give a special shout out to our sponsors, Municipal. You guys see me wearing the hats and the shirts in all of these videos. They've been a great partner for us and I absolutely love all of the clothing and really they're just getting better and better and better. They're dropping new gear all the time. Some of it's in limited quantity. So if you wanna go check that out and you like it, make sure you grab that right away. They've got a new line of golf apparel coming out, but they don't have just the golf stuff. I'm also wearing the municipal things really everywhere. I wear the shorts and t-shirts to the gym. The hoodies that they have are like the most comfortable thing, the hoodies and the sweatpants. So it's really stuff that I can wear and you can wear when you're going to play golf, but it's also casual. I, mean, I could leave the golf course, be at home, go to the gym. Absolutely love the municipal gear if you haven't tried any of it before grab a polo grab a municipal hack you're going to absolutely love their gear we'll put the uh, link in the description down below Okay, the first way to stop rushing your golf swing is to be aware of the tempo. Now, when we look at good golf swings and you were to measure them, what we see is pretty much the same across the board. You would see a backswing to downswing ratio of about three to one. What that means is when you take your setup from the setup position to the top of the backswing, that would take about three times as long as from the top of the backswing to impact three to one now here's the key and this is tip number one i don't think you should feel three to one what i think you should feel is one to one you should feel a continuous motion of the club head working back and through without any conscious acceleration or deceleration when you're just hitting now i've got a seven iron here and that's really the first thing i want you to key in on back and through at the same exact tempo. So when I take my setup here, I'm gonna feel like the club goes up over my right shoulder, through over my left, and of course the downswing is gonna be faster, of course it's gonna have more acceleration, but I'm not consciously trying to do that. I want you to be able to feel as though it stays the same all the way back and through. So it's more of a one-to-one. -one. So the feel that I have as I'm just clipping little sevens, seven irons there is a one, two, right? One over my right shoulder, two over my left shoulder. And while we would measure that at three to one, one to one is what you wanna feel there. Okay, strategy number two, very similar to the first one, but a slightly different concept. I find players that struggle with their tempo and rhythm and rushing the downswing are really putting a lot of attention on trying to get to the golf ball or get to impact or really hit at the golf ball. What I would rather you have in your mind is a sensation that you're going from the top of the backswing, point A, to the finish position, point B. And again, this is the same with a sand wedge, seven iron or driver. The sensation is that there's nothing going on in between. So not only am I keeping the same rhythm, one back, two through, I'm feeling as though nothing's going on in between the two. So strategy number two, Go right from the top of your backswing, point A, right into your follow through, point B. Okay, strategy number three is to keep that tempo and rhythm with all of your golf clubs. So I've got a sand wedge, a seven iron, and a driver. Now, if we measured my club head speed with each one of those clubs, certainly as the clubs got longer, my speed would get faster. But in my mind, as I'm playing and what I'm feeling is that I'm swinging them at the same tempo, the same rhythm. I'm not rushing uh, anymore. What we have a tendency to do is when we get to the longer clubs, especially like a seven iron, six, five, four, we want to add more speed because the ball is supposed to go farther. And of course, if we measured it on track, man, it would be faster, but you want to feel the same rhythm. So what I'm looking for here is the same thing back. Same thing through, and this is whether I'm gonna hit a sand wedge, you know, 110 yards here. Let's just do a sand wedge back, through. Now I'm trying to keep that same tempo. If I bring in my seven iron, I'm gonna feel the same thing. So I know this golf ball is gonna go farther, but I'm gonna let the club do its work here. I'm just feeling the same thing. Back and through, I'm not gonna try and add any speed. That club, then that ball should be going farther automatically. And then same thing with the driver. If I had my driver in, right, and I'm just trying to hit a stock shot, 
I want to try and feel like my tempo is the same. You know, certain times where maybe you want to hit it a little bit farther, but this is, I'm just trying to feel the same thing, back and through, same pieces. Okay, strategy number four is grip pressure. When you think about rushing your downswing and your tempo going off, really the more tense or the tighter that you get, typically the harder that's going to be. You want to feel more relaxed, nice and smooth tempo and not rushing. Now listen, people ask me all the time, what should my grip pressure be? Should it be a 3 out of 10, like I'm just kind of barely holding it, or a 5 out of 10, a 10 out of 10? Here's the reality. I've worked with a lot of players who are all over the place there, and they all can work good. So I don't think there's a perfect grip pressure. I would just you know, live at the 5 out of 10 to start with. If you're having struggles with rushing and tempo issues, live about in the middle 5 out of 10. I think the key thing here is that whatever tempo you have, you keep the same. And so if I'm going to start with a 5 out of 10, I know I'm trying to keep the same tempo back and forth. I'm trying to feel that with all clubs. Here's where I see it go off. If you start 5 out of 10 and then you go, oh, 7 out of 10, and you grip the club real tight when you go back, typically I see that happen uh, either during the takeaway where your grip pressure would increase or it's pretty good going back and then it increases down as you're trying to hit. You don't really want to feel that your grip pressure is increasing. And now that you're thinking about that, you may feel that. You want to have the grip pressure remain the same. That's going to keep the arms looser. We're going to have better tempo. It's going to remove the rushing. So grip pressure is the next piece. Let's just say we start with it 5 out of 10 and just hit a shot here, feeling the same tempo back and through. Keep it 5 out of 10. Don't increase or decrease that throughout the whole motion. And I'm telling you, that part right there for a lot of you is going to feel really different and really good because you're used to squeezing the club. That's strategy number four. Okay, strategy number five, breathing. Okay, this is one of the most overlooked things to good tempo and not rushing and something you definitely want to focus on. If you're on the first tee and people are standing around and maybe you're nervous or you're coming down the stretch or your first couple holes with your buddies and you're a little bit worried, thinking about your breathing. When you think good tempo, good rhythm, not rushing and feeling good, you think about your body being relaxed, yeah? And then think about what can you do to make your body more relaxed. Well, breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. Do that with me one time. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Now, do you feel more relaxed or less relaxed than about five seconds ago? You feel more relaxed, right? That breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth is what you want to be feeling as you're going, in particular, during your pre-shot routine. So I'm going to just step back and then I'll come back in. As you're hitting shots, I would be thinking in through my nose, out through my mouth. Now, I can't do that and talk at the same time, so I'm going to demonstrate. Hopefully, you can hear it. I'm going to go in through my nose, out through my mouth the whole time. Keep my grip pressure constant. And that's a nice, smooth shot, and it feels good more than anything. I'm telling you, the grip pressure and that breathing, it doesn't really matter what hole you go in or go out. It's just in through your nose, out through your mouth. Being aware of your breathing, keep that constant grip pressure. Strategy number six, and this is minor, it goes along with the breathing, but it's really helped me and the students I've worked with, and that's being aware of the tension in your jaw. Okay, so you see a lot of these things are kind of the same here. It's tension related, grip pressure, the breathing, your jaw, a lot of the tension we hold in your jaw. I just want you to feel as you're going like your jaw stays loose, even keeping your mouth open a little bit as you're going and being aware of that can help. And you can just add that in as you're doing your breathing. So as I'm going in through my nose, out through my mouth, okay, I'm feeling like I'm going back and through at the same rate here. My grip pressure is staying the same, not increasing. I'm just going to feel like my jaw is nice and relaxed. My mouth is slightly open. Breathing in through my nose, out through my mouth, relaxing my whole face. Grip pressure remains the same the whole time, back and through not trying to add any speed or take any speed away. The jaw is good, but really your whole face should feel relaxed as you're doing the breathing. Okay, strategy number seven before we get to number eight, really the one uh, in terms of how you would train this will be number eight. This one's a little bit more uh, if you're struggling to get the feel, something you can implement 
in your pre-shot routine and in your practice. And it's just what we call continuous motion. So if we ever get a chance to go play, you would see me on a tee box when I'm doing my practice swings. I'll always start with the club a few feet forward, swing it back to the top, swing it through, swing it back to the top, and swing it all the way through. That's my pre-shot routine, right? So if I just do it behind the ball, it'd look like this. So the club never stops, right? And me feeling like I'm not rushing and good tempo and rhythm, continuous back in motion would be an easy way to do that. And you could even just be there, start here and just get the club moving back, through, back, through. It's like it goes the same rate. Your grip pressure stays the same. Your face is relaxed. You're feeling like it goes back and through at the same tempo. That would be a really nice feel to have if you're struggling with just getting a general sense of these feels. And then I would take that same continuous motion, grip pressure the same, breathing, faces relaxed, going from point A to point B. Strategy number eight, the last one we saved for last is really the best of all of them. This is how I would suggest practicing to uh, get your rhythm, find your rhythm, find your tempo, and stop the rushing. This is like a little leapfrog drill that we do here. So here's how I would do this. I've got a seven iron, you can use a seven or eight iron. What I wanna do is hit my first golf ball with a full swing as short as I possibly can. So I'm gonna probably hit it like 70, 80 yards. This is like 20% speed. Each swing I make from there, I'm trying to hit the ball about 20 yards past the previous golf ball until I get to my full swing. And at some point from that first ball, to the last ball, which will be like 100% speed, I'll find a range in there that feels really good. So my seven iron, I hit like 175. Now, if I went as fast as I possibly could, I could hit it like 185, 190, but that's out of control for me and it doesn't feel good. I don't feel like I can repeat that. But about one level below there is where my smooth is at, it's 175. And I can find that and you'll find that by doing this drill. So I'll just do a couple to kind of show you. And don't worry if you don't hit the first ones perfect. It's not easy to hit them perfect going this slow. But my seven iron here is gonna go like 70 to 100 yards. I mean, this is gonna be a full swing, very slow tempo. Okay, so that's about as slow as I feel like I could go and still hit it. And I mean, that probably went like 80 yards, right? So now, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna try and hit this next one uh, 20 yards past that. So if that was 20% speed, I'm just making up a number, it doesn't matter, maybe it's 10 or 20, whatever. I'm gonna now feel like I go about 10 yards past that, about 100 yards. And that was pretty good, about 100 yards. This is also an incredible, not that this is what this is about, but incredible distance control game. Like if you find a really good player, uh, they would be able to do this kind of without knowing it, right? Uh, this is a really good distance control game. So that was 100. Now I'm gonna go still full swing, just ramp up the speed a little bit, 120. Yeah, and that's pretty close there. And then I'm gonna go 140, right? Then I'm gonna go 160. Then I'm gonna go all the way to my full. So you get the point here. I'm gonna work my way up to the point where I hit the ball as hard as I possibly can. And then probably one level below that. And so if you're not sure like, hey, what rhythm is for me? The point is that you're trying to keep that tempo the same. But some players' tempos are quick, like John Rahm. Some are slow like Ernie L's, okay? If you track their club head speed, they might be the same speed. One looks really fast one looks really slow, it's the same speed. The point is, if you go fast, fast, that's the same thing, or go slow, slow. Just keep the rhythm on both sides. That's eight strategies. I think if you put one, two, or three, even the breathing, the face stuff when you go play, I think this will make a huge difference in your game and your ability to stop rushing and just feel good out on the golf course when you're hitting shots. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully one or several of those eight will help you when you go play. If you want some more help with your tempo and your game, we're still doing our 14-day free trial to kagornogolf.com. You can send me your swings. I'll personally analyze them and put a plan together for you. Absolutely risk-free. You either like it, we work together, I help you play better golf, or you don't, you pay absolutely zero. Uh, if you also wanna watch more videos on tempo and rhythm, we'll put a card on the screen for that. Leave any comments down below. Thank you guys for watching.